Hi, Cuba Gooding Jr. here, and you're watching Extraordinary People. What's up, Atlanta? Welcome back to Extraordinary People. I'm Glenn of your host, and we're on location at American Black Film Festival in South Beach with the executive producer and founder, Jeff Friday. Jeff, thank you so much for appearing on Extraordinary People. And I would like for our audience to know a little bit more. They saw footage from last year's festival. However, they don't really know what this is all about specifically. So could you tell us how this all began and exactly where it started? Sure. Uh, first of all, welcome. It's good. nice to meet you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. It's my second year here, and I love it. I didn't, meet you. I didn't meet you last I time. I know, unfortunately. <laughs> I made it up for it this time. Um, the idea for the film festival was really to create an alternative to Sundance. You know, when, when I went to other film festivals around the world, like Sundance and Toronto, uh, you rarely see any significant representation of, of films by people of African descent or of color, of any, of any ethnicity. Uh, so I was actually having a, a lunch back in 1987, 1997, with two colleagues of mine, Byron Lewis and Warrington Hutland, and we were talking about real estate and life, and somehow we started talking about movies and film festivals, and wouldn't it be great if, if there were better independent movies for black people, and whether black people even made movies, and... And at the end of that meal, we decided to, to do a, a black film festival. And it really just evolved very organically uh, through this, what, what has now become this, this very important lunch meeting. Um, we did the first festival in 1997. Uh, on faith, we didn't know how many people were coming. We had about 190 people come down to Mexico. We, the first five years were in Acapulco. Um, Every year the audience grew. By the time we got to our fifth year, we had about 800 people there to come in. Wow. Um, when we first decided to do it, we called people like Robert Townsend and, and Halle Berry and Bill Duke, and they all said that they were supportive of it. They thought it was a great concept. Um, after our fifth year, we moved to Miami. We're here in Miami now for our 10th anniversary, and uh, I think there are 3,500 people here. So this, there was definitely uh, a need to do this. and. and you know, I ju again, I just I'm very very happy that we had that lunch ten years ago, and and we decided to embark upon this journey. I know that's phenomenal how a luncheon, a real estate luncheon, could turn into this tremendous film festival as a result. That's how life is I know it life, is life, really life, is life collaborating just, and those putting things. those like minds yeah. together. Well, I, I am enjoying myself so much and looking forward to coming back again. And I really appreciate this interview with you. My pleasure. Thank you again for appearing on Extraordinary People. Hello. This is Atlanta, right? Atlanta, yes. Atlanta, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Hi. Hey. Nice to meet you. We got you. Extraordinary People. We have Adele Givens with us. Right. She, she's not, she knows this is a family show, so she's going to be real cool. We know that she's been on DF Comedy Jam. And, uh, but yeah, I'll tell you my, my favorite performance. Okay. On the Bernie Mac show when you play Bernie Mac's sister. Oh! Thank you so much for being with us on Extraordinary People today. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, it is a pleasure. I would like our audience to know what a legend you are in the industry. I, I recall watching the movie The American Dream, the yeah. Jackson family, and Vanessa Williams played the role of you. So I want people to know exactly a little bit about who Susan, I know they know, but however, some people don't really know how much you've done in this industry. So could you just tell us a little bit about some of the things? Well, I started at Motown Records, uh, seems like a million years ago right now, as the creative assistant to Barry Gordy. Mm -hmm. And I really had the opportunity to work with some of the Motown legends, maybe all of them, at one time or another. So it was Diana Ross and Smokey Robinson and Marvin Gaye and Stevie Wonder. And I think um, the movie that you referenced really tells the story of how I was uh, introduced to these young kids from Gary, Indiana by Bobby Taylor, one of the artists at Motown. And um, I had just started working for Mr. Gordy at the time, and, and I was really scared to death of him, to tell you the truth. And I called him up and I said, Mr. Gordy, I've just seen this most incredible act. And he said, good. I said, you know, there are these kids from Gary. He said, kids? 
I don't want any kids. Do you know how much trouble it is with Stevie Wonder and that teacher welfare worker and blah, blah? I don't want to see any kids. I said, but you really should see them. And he was like, no. And I think the defining moment of that was when I decided that I couldn't let him say no. And I persisted and went back and said, I know you said no, but would you really please see them? And they became, of course, the Jackson Five. No.